Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about berries. We've talked a lot about berries in the past couple weeks, about the different types of berries. Berries that you can grow in a, a climate similar to mine. Berries you've probably never heard of, but when I was doing those videos, a lot of you guys had mentioned to me that your particular plants of select different types of berries, let's say the honeyberry here as an example, a lot of you guys were complaining that they just don't do well in your yard, they don't grow very much, they just don't really seem to be doing a whole lot. And I can certainly empathize with that. The first couple years I had put in three honeyberries in this row here, and they didn't do a whole lot in the first year, um, really next to nothing. In fact, what the honeyberry likes to do is that it puts out a lot of growth very early in the season, and then that growth sort of stops and um, it puts a lot of its energy, I guess, into ripening these berries, and then the rest of the year, I think it may just be too warm, especially if the soil is not covered really heavily. Um, but once it gets a certain temperature here, I think they just stop growing completely, and that kind of throws off a lot of you guys. It was a big complaint that I just kept hearing. And here's another one, actually. Here's another honeyberry. But this honeyberry is actually two years in the ground, Whereas the two I showed you over here, that's their third year in the ground. Their third spring. So this guy is actually doing really well. And it seems like, I don't know what it is. Maybe the more fertility that is coming into my yard. Even though I wouldn't consider this really the most fertile bed. Uh, maybe it's the source of the plants that I'm getting them from now instead. Like here's a new honeyberry. This is brand new. Just planted very recently and you can see it's putting out lots of growth in fact there's another one over here it's doing a similar thing but then again this is the time of the year that they do this you know this is when they put out all their growth but this guy looks even better um, I had stepped on the other one broke some branches but you can see look even this one has like a, actually quite a bit of fruit on it for the size that it is and uh, to me, I can, I, like I said, I can empathize with you guys, but they're kind of really starting to get going. And I don't know, I just really can't put a finger on it, but I really think it has a lot to do with the heat and covering the soil and um, really adding fertility to the yard. I know for, for a fact that these comfrey plants just add so much fertility wherever they are. It's insane. You don't even have to chop and drop them and put that mulch on the plant. Just by having it next to the plant, it somehow makes the, the, the soil so fertile that it's unreal. Um, I don't know. I don't get it. But comfrey is an incredible plant and it really is, I think, having a large effect on this particular honeyberry as well as this gooseberry because right next to the gooseberry is indeed another comfrey plant. In fact, there's one right there and one right there. And then also, <laughs> there's a gummy berry, another gummy berry, which are both nitrogen fixers. So I think these guys are really benefiting from having these companion plants in this location because normally, and this is the big issue here that I want to mention, is that they just take forever to get going. And it's now finally in the third year that this particular honeyberry and the honeyberry behind it. I think this guy behind the, uh, the third one here may not be three years old. I think we may have put him in two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, the point is, is that these guys are finally now going crazy after their second year, but they don't really have any companion plants. They don't have anything special going on over here. Whereas these two certainly do. And I think it's not really until the third year, unless you've got this weird situation going on, that they're really gonna do much. Um, it's the same thing with like blueberries. Um, they really take a long time to kind of get established. Um, a lot of plants, a lot of these little berries, these little really small plants you get in the mail, they just don't do a whole lot. Like they're not like figs, man. And a lot of you guys watch my videos because I grow a lot of figs. The fig is so vigorous that comparing a fig tree <laughs> to any of these berries that I'm mentioning 
is just crazy. It's just not the same in any form. Um, some of the berries that do really well for me, even in their first year, are the raspberries and the blackberries, which are gonna be really filling in this whole bed in no time. And the strawberries, which are also gonna fill in this whole area. It's gonna be uncontrollable for the most part. Um, now, if I bring you over here to the currants, I wanna show you a similar thing. Now, I believe these currants are now in their third year, if I'm not mistaken. You know what, it'd be, I have to go back and look, to be honest with you. It may be that the currants are in their third year and the honey, or the honeyberries I showed you are in their fourth year. I'm not entirely sure, but I'll have to check. I can always find out. But these guys here, the red currants that I've planted here, definitely in their third year now, um, are doing insane. And you can see all the little fruits on here. These things are just covered, like head to toe. Absolutely head to toe. You can't really see the fruit unless I get low. Um, it's actually kind of insane. And these guys took forever, like I said. This is a similar thing. They just take a while to get going. They're not like the persimmon. They're not like the stone fruits or the apples or the mulberries that are on the standard rootstocks that grow super vigorously. Check out this current, by the way. This is the star of them all. This guy is an absolute freaking machine. Excuse the, uh, the language. I look at that branch. I mean, that's just insane. Absolutely insane. So the point I'm trying to make here with this little video is I just want to tell you guys to be patient because you will get rewarded. These things do actually produce really well. This one we transplanted. And you can see, look at the difference between that guy there and this one. We just kind of dug this one up and put it here um, in this location. And it's just, uh, it's just not doing well, you know? So it's kind of obvious that even with like very little transplant shock, they just need some time to kind of get, get going here. I think this one's only two years old or we transplanted this one last year. So yeah, it is what it is, but that's, really the point is that if you want these little weird interesting berries the fruits i just mentioned really they do take about three years to really do much of anything and it, it kind of you know you may think the same thing you could say the same thing about other fruit trees you know even the stone fruits even the apples even the pears they actually do take about three years before they really start putting out a lot of fruit you know these we just planted and the peaches, you know, that's just the thing that they do is they put out a lot of fruit at a smaller size, you know, but the thing like my apricots and the plums and all that, they really don't do too too crazy of things unless it's like their third year. So I'm kind of, um, personally, you just have to be patient is really all it is. And um, that's kind of the, uh, the little issue here, the little, you know, piece of advice in this this video um, I do want to show you well, I guess while I'm here is that this pear was not doing very well with this particular branch of the pear it's very strange because the rest of the tree looks beautiful there's tons of fruit that is set I mean look at all this nice growth up here this is insane crazy but then if you look down to this this one branch it's just so strange like look beautiful not doing well and I kind of looked down to this branch and it looks like it's actually it took some damage here so the branch is sort of in a way dying and actually everything uh, below the damage right here this particular uh, spur is doing totally fine and everything else above it is not so I don't know what happened to that particular branch but I'm gonna have to come in here and really closely inspect this and I may even have to cut this out in fact I may just it may be my great benefit actually to just cut it out right now because maybe there's some disease some kind of insect maybe that got in here and we don't want that to spread to the other parts of the tree but anyway guys that is the video and um, yeah just be patient all right everyone Take care. We'll catch you for tomorrow's video. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
lots of things to come in the yard here so also stay tuned to the uh, YouTube videos hit the subscribe button hit the like button if you want to see more about the berries I mentioned in this video just let me know down in the comments all right guys take care